In this video, we'll talk about maximum a posteriori estimation, and this will allow us to include prior beliefs into our estimation. So in MLE, we use IID samples x1 through xn from some distribution with unknown parameters theta um, as in order to estimate theta. And so the way we did that was we computed this likelihood, which is the probability of seeing the data given the parameter theta, and we chose the best theta or vector of parameters theta that maximizes this likelihood or log likelihood. But if you if you really think about it, shouldn't we be maximizing the probability of theta given x instead, right? Um, we're given the data, right, x, and we should be trying to find the probability of theta, right? And, and you know, there, this is one way to do it, and but it doesn't make sense unless theta is a random variable itself, right? The probability of theta, um, what does it mean if theta is actually supposed to be fixed? So um, in, in the Bayesian uh, framework, which is what we're going to be in right now when we do maximum a posteriori, we're going to assume that unknown parameter is a random variable, okay? Um, unlike maximum likelihood, when we assume theta was just some fixed number that would never change. So now, since theta is a random variable, we're going to have a prior distribution, pi theta of theta, which is our, dis our belief on theta before we know anything and our posterior distribution of uh, pi theta of theta given x. Given that we observe the data, what is our new belief on theta? So by Bayes' theorem, you can actually um, you know, flip x and theta, and then you get something like this. And this is just proportional to the, to the, the, sorry, the numerator, because uh, if you're trying to maximize this with respect to theta, um, you know, the, the denominator is a constant, right? It's just, uh, it doesn't depend on theta at all. And so uh, instead of maximizing this likelihood, okay, we're going to maximize this posterior belief, right? This is the mode of a distribution, right? You can imagine that theta has a PMF or a PDF. And when we try to maximize this, we're trying to find the point that maximizes that density function or the PMF. And this is actually proportional to just the likelihood times the prior by Bayes' theorem. So it's actually almost the same exact thing, except we, in addition, have this um, prior term here. And so we're going to see how that changes things. So MAP, uh, instead of maximizing the likelihood, it actually ma maximizes this posterior distribution of um, theta, which actually happens to be proportional to the likelihood times the prior. So that's the only difference here. And so I think this is best illustrated through an example. So suppose we have samples uh, 00110 from Bernoulli theta, where theta is unknown. And we're going to assume that there's no restriction on theta. Um, so that means it's just in the interval 0 to 1. Um, what is the maximum likelihood estimate for theta? So we actually did this before. And you know, we would write the likelihood function, which is like, you know, we had two heads, so theta squared and three tails, 1 minus theta cubed. And you know, we, we did arg max of this. right? This is the likelihood function. And we saw, if you solve for theta, you'll uh, take the derivative, set it to 0, you'll get 2 fifths. Okay? Or it, visually, you can see 2 fifths is the um, on, if you drew a graph, you would see that it maximizes this, this function. Okay, so now let's actually add a constraint. So let's say theta has to be one of these three numbers. What's the maximum likelihood estimate for theta? So you you know you don't need to take a derivative anymore because actually since we're restricting it to a finite set, and we want to find the theta that maximizes the likelihood, we can actually just plug in these three numbers to the likelihood and just see which one's the best, right? So we just plug in. Um, over theta in this range, okay, of the likelihood, right? Just again, maximizing likelihood, um, and you can plug in 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8 for theta, and you can see whichever is largest, which is happens to be 0 0.5. Um, again, it has the highest likelihood. Again, we're not caring about the max, but actually the arg max. So I don't care that it's 0.03. I just care that it was better than everything else. Okay, so this is all MLE, and now we're gonna see what we're gonna do with MAP. So we're gonna assume theta is still restricted, okay? To those three numbers, but now we have a prior distribution on theta. So we're gonna uh, pretend theta is a random variable, and we have an initial belief. So my belief is that uh, 0.2 has a 0.1 probability, 0.5 has a 0.01 probability, and 0.7 has a 0.89 probability. And notice that these three numbers add up to 1 0 0.89, 0 0.1, and 0 0.01. So we're defining a probability distribution, a discrete one, over the range of three numbers, right? The pro possible probability of heads is either 0 0.2, 0 0.5, or 0 0.7, and those add up to one. So if I want to find the maximum uh, a posteriori estimate, MAP, okay, instead of maximizing the likelihood, I'm going to maximize the likelihood times the prior. So you can see how the effect of this prior is going to work. Again, since it's only three numbers, we're going to plug in all of them. 
And you can, so these three numbers are actually the same from the previous slide. And you'll see that actually this prior actually um, kills off these first two, right? Look, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 just completely adds so many zeros to these. And so our maximum a posterior estimate is actually 0 0.7 because 0 0.7 is the one that maximizes the likelihood times the prior. And you can see how our prior knowledge actually made it so that 0 0.7 was more likely and 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 are very unlikely. So that's how we incorporate prior knowledge into our estimate. Okay, we have a belief distribution. Okay, pi. And so then we can also make the MAP whatever we want it to be. Okay, so let's try finding a prior over these 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 so that the MAT, MAP is each one of these. And so the stupid way to do this, or the easy way, is to just put 1 on you know, 0.2 and then 0 on the other 2. And then when you do the likelihood times the prior, you get you know, something times 1, and then everything else is something times 0, something times 0. And so you can make the MAP whatever you want by putting a probability of 1 or like 0.999 on it and 0 0.000 on everything else. So this you know, idea of having a prior is kind of arbitrary, uh, or what we're going to choose for it. So uh, here's our random picture. OK, so now, um, you know, of course, we don't want to restrict ourselves to just you know, three numbers. Um, so for the Bernoulli binomial distribution, we want to get any value in 0, 1, not just you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. So uh, we're going to actually we're gonna have to have a probability distribution over all of these real numbers 0 to 1. And so instead of having a discrete PMF like we did earlier, we actually need to have a density function, right? Because there's an uncountable amount of numbers we need to assign density to now. And so the way we do that is we assign theta this beta distribution uh, with parameters alpha and beta. And we talked about this in the last video. Um, and the density function of a beta is this, OK, uh, for theta in 0, 1. And this, this thing here is just a normalizing constant that makes it integrate to 1. It's not important. Um, this part here is important. Okay, so we'll see what's happening. So, so recall the mode of a beta random variable is this. Okay, remember because it's pretend we saw alpha minus one heads, and then alpha minus uh, and beta minus one tails. So that's kind of what we uh, thought about last time. And so now we're gonna uh, take n samples from a Bernoulli distribution. And remember that our MLE is k over n, right? It's just the number of heads, like the sum of all these ones and zeros, divided by the number of trials. So we need to show that. This posterior distribution, right? Um, pi theta of theta given x, right? So we had a belief distribution pi theta of theta, right? That's our, that's this beta distribution. Actually, it turns out the posterior is also beta distributed. Uh, remember, the posterior is a prior times the likelihood, and we're gonna see that it works out really nicely for us. And show it, show that it's beta with different parameters, and find the MAP. So how are we gonna do that? So this looks very complicated and like don't know where to start, but it's okay. So we're gonna take it one step at a time, right? We're gonna try to find the MAP. So we need to maximize this pi theta of theta given x. And we need and we know that it's proportional to likelihood times prior. And remember the way we got this is we used Bayes theorem and then um, deleted the denominator because it only depended on x. If we're trying to find a theta that maximizes this, we don't care about um, things that don't depend on theta. And so the likelihood, right? Uh, the problem of getting k heads, okay? Uh, you know, out of n, n trials, right? That's what happened here. We had exactly k heads, and this is the binomial PMF, right? We have to get n choose k, we choose k which k of them are heads, and then theta to the k1 minus theta to the n minus k. Then pi theta of theta is just our density function, our belief, right? Um, and so that's this thing. And so if you do some algebra, so first we're gonna drop these um, things that don't depend on theta, because again, we're not, we're maximizing with respect to theta. And you'll notice that you know, we can combine like terms and we get theta to the k plus alpha minus one and one minus theta to the n minus k plus beta minus one. And so this is our posterior distribution, okay? And this actually, if you look at this um, density function here, right, we have a proportional, this normalizing constant. If you look at, if you stare hard enough at this, right, this it looks exactly like a beta density function, except alpha is replaced by k plus alpha and beta here is replaced by n minus k plus beta. And so our posterior distribution happens to be a beta distribution as well, right? Again, this is a belief on our, our value of theta, right? And this is, you know, the range of theta is 0 to 1. So this is, again, a density function from 0 to 1. And so the mode of this beta is what we said here um, um, from you know, earlier. That's the point uh, with the highest density, which we're going to choose to be our MAP estimate. OK, so this is very interesting. Um, 
the what happened. So uh, we're gonna analyze that in a second. So first, remember that beta one one is uniform zero one because it's pretend that we saw alpha minus one heads and beta minus one tails, which is like pretend you saw nothing. And so you can think of that as having a uniform belief distribution, right? On your x-axis, you have zero to one, and you have no you know preference for any of those values. So all the density is flat. If we use this as a prior, how would the MLE and MAP compare? So from this previous slide, you know, choose alpha and beta to be one. That's our prior. So our M MAP estimate actually becomes the same as our maximum likelihood estimate. Okay. So having no prior or having uniform prior is the same as not knowing anything ahead of time, and that's what MLE kind of does, right? We're not using any prior knowledge. We're just looking at the data only. So the the interesting thing is that since the posterior is also beta distribution. We call beta the conjugate prior to the uh, Bernoulli and binomial distribution. So again, the reason why we did that is because um, we were, you know, again, we were trying to estimate the, you know, probability p of heads, right, in a, you know, Bernoulli, and it turns out if, you know, we get to choose a prior distribution, right, as as usual, and then we end up with some posterior, but. You know, there's a reason I chose the beta distribution. It wasn't this chance. And the reason is because if I choose a beta prior, okay, then my prior times my likelihood actually still has a beta distribution. And that's why we call beta a conjugate prior uh, for this distribution. Because the, if you choose it to be a prior, your posterior will also be the same distribution with different parameters. And that's really um, how we generally choose um, priors, you know, because it's kind of arbitrary. Like, what is, one of, what is my prior belief on the, num the probability of heads? I don't know. Um, so we just choose it to make it for convenience, literally. Um, that's why. So how do we interpret alpha and beta, right? Here's our MAP estimate, OK? K is the true number of heads, and N is the true number of trials, right? Our MLE was just K over N. So alpha minus 1, remember, is the number of fake heads we saw ahead of time, right? Our you know, beta alpha beta was the prior, and that means we pretend we saw alpha minus 1 uh, heads. and uh, alpha minus one and beta minus one tails, right? So total, we you know pretend we saw this many total trials, and uh, alpha minus one of them were heads. So our MAP uh, estimate actually has a nice interpretation, which is that we pretend we saw alpha minus one heads uh, ahead of time, beta minus one tails ahead of time, and then our total number of heads is k plus alpha minus one, and our total number of trials is the denominator here, and so. The way to interpret our prior is that you know we just pretend we saw this, and now our estimate is just the number of heads over the number of trials, um, both you know real and fake ones, the ones in the data k and n, and the ones that we, you know, pretend we saw with this prior. So that's the nice interpretation, um, and this is not really luck, right? This beta distribution happened to match this you know binomial PMF, so that you know we were able to uh, get the same thing. Okay, so. As the number of sample goes to infinity, what's the relationship between MLE and MAP? And what does it say about our prior when n is small or n is large? So actually, they become equal. So the prior is important if we don't have much data, right? Because if you add, like, you know, if we have, like, only, you know, five trials and two out of two heads, right, it would be two-fifths. And so any number of fake heads and tails we see will actually really, you know, affect our estimate, right? Um, but if we have so much data, like, uh, you know, 10 million, and, you know, you pretend you saw two heads and three tails ahead of time, that's really not going to do anything uh, to, to our guess. So as the number of samples goes to infinity, our prior kind of gets washed away, right? Because, you know, the evidence just is so strong. Um, so the prior is more important when, you're, when you don't have much data. So, and then finally, what do you think is better? Um, there's no right answer, okay? So there's m two main schools in statistics, Bayesian and Frequentist. Frequentists say, I prefer MLE because I don't believe there's a prior belief on anything. I don't really have one. And even if I did, right, like if I think it's more likely to be 50% heads, how am I to decide alpha and beta? Like, do I pretend I saw 10 heads and 10 tails or 100 and 100? Like, they all have the mode of like, um, you know, 50%. Um, and they believe the parameter being estimated is a fixed quantity, like a, a real number that's not a random variable. And Bayesians prefer MAP because they want to incorporate prior knowledge. Um, and the parameter has to be random variable in this case. And we seek the mode, right? The value with the highest PMF or uh, PDF. And, but is it reasonable to assume that a coin is more likely fair than not? I don't know. And this beta distribution is just one family of distributions. There's like infinitely many different priors you could put. And we only chose beta because of you know, the conjugacy.
property, which is kind of arbitrary. So, you know, is there really a good reason to put a prior? And, you know, you know sometimes I guess, it, you know, either way you could think about it. Uh, it's up to you, really. Um, I don't think one is always better. They might have different advantages and disadvantages. Okay, anyway, but in the long run, if you have more samples, this argument doesn't even matter because, you know, the estimates will be the same anyway. So, yeah. Okay, thanks.